Here we'll give a detailed description of creating a VI, namely a motor on off function, which will consist of turning the motors on, waiting one second, and then stopping. Within LabVIEW, by going up to the file menu, you can select either a new VI, which targets the main application instance, or specifically by doing new EV3 and a targeted VI, it allows you to target the EV3 and create remotely targeted programs. When you select new VI, two windows pop open. The first is the gray colored background, which is the front panel. The second is the white colored, which is the block diagram. This is where your code will go. So we'll select this block diagram and by right clicking, it brings up the function palette. These are the available functions for controlling the EV3. The first sub palette is called programming. These are a variety of different structures for structuring your program, determining order of operations, and doing mathematics. The second palette is called IO. This stands for input output. Here are the functions for directly communicating with the sensors and motors and other parts of the EV3 brick. The third one are a collection of advanced behaviors. For this program, since we want to turn the motor on, wait, and stop, we're going to be using the input output. The palette itself can be locked in place by clicking this little thumbtack in the upper left. Doing so then makes this a floating window that can be moved around. Additionally, by right clicking on the block diagram, you can open up multiple function palettes simultaneously. This is helpful if you're working on several different sub palettes and want to have access to all of them at the same time. In this case, we're just using the input-output one, so I will right-click to bring up the function palette. Under the input-output sub-palette, I will lock that in place, and now I have on my computer screen access to all the inputs and outputs simultaneously. The first part of our program was we wanted to move the motors, so I'm going to single-click on the move motor function and bring that out and drop it onto my block diagram. This places that block, the function for turning the motors on, onto my code. Second, we wanted to wait, so I'm going to use the wait for function and drag that out and drop it as well next to the motors on. Finally, we want to stop the motors, so I will use the stop motor function, single click, bring it out and drop that also onto my block diagram. So I've created the structure of my program, starting motors, waiting for one second, which is the default, and then stopping. However, we need to wire these together to indicate the order of operations. If you bring your mouse to the top right part of the motor move function, you'll notice that it changes into a little wiring tool as well as indicates the different connection points on this block. Up here in the top right, I'm going to single click, which starts the wiring, and then as I move my mouse, you can see this partial wire being created, and I'm going to connect that to the top left of the time function. Single clicking again creates that wire, which indicates that the power in the motors will happen first, waiting for time happens second. I'll do the same thing on the right side, top right side of the time function and connect that to the top left side of the brake. A single click, moving my mouse, and a single click again to complete that wiring. If you run into a situation where you uh, don't like your wires, you can hit escape to cancel them or control Z to undo. Now that I've created my program and I have my EV3 here, I can click the run button which will compile, download, and then run the program. Since I did download it, it does mean that I can also disconnect the EV3 and run it remotely. 